Hi, in this video I'm going to use surf and brisk features to match points across two different images of the same object in which the images differ only by rotation and scale. So once the points are used to identify the object, we're going to infer the rotation and scale uh, from those points. The, the surf, uh, in this uh, video I'm including in the description some, uh, some information about the the features uh, that uh, that uh, that are used in this video, for example, surf, which means speeded up a uh, robust features and is good for scale and rotation, which is a problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, also, we have a brisk, which is defined up here, a binary robust invariant scalable point key points, which is good also for uh, scale and rotation. Uh, there are other things like uh, corner detection, true Harris corner detection, and other things. And you might wonder, uh, all of these things um, can be done uh, with deep learning, convolutional neural networks, yes. Uh, but uh, the advantage is that if the problem is uh, small enough, uh, these things are way faster, could be could be way faster, and do, do not require training or the baggage of a bunch of data. They are basically doing some uh, processing, uh, some basically they find features around the, the, the points of interest and their neighbors. And for example, let's say a uh, surf features. I'm also including uh, this link in, into the description on this video. It has a good, uh, a concise, fast uh, a description of, of each of these features, including surf. And for example, surf, uh, in this case, you can see that it is matching points uh, between two different images that are the same but with different scale, similar to what I'm, uh, what I'm gonna do here in this example. And it is using the Haitian matrix. So you can see how the difference gradients around the pixels are, are used to detect patterns. Other uh, operations can be done to, to infer features. Yeah, uh, so you can refer to that. Uh, okay, so let's go to the example. The, in the first example, we're just going to use uh, serve features. Uh, you can hit here to open the script. And that takes us to here. So let's load the image okay so here's the image nothing special so we're gonna use im resize to rescale the image by 70 percent and we have the new image in j now we're gonna use im rotate on the j image and the rotate is gonna be for 30 degrees and let's take a look at how the image looks, rotated by 30 degrees and is smaller 30%. Okay, good. Now let's uh, use detect surf features and this is going to return us the surf points for both the original and distorted image. So we have a total of 180 points and the points uh, are surf points. So let's take one of them, and you can see that each one of them has the X and Y location, but also has other properties like a scale, a, a sign of Laplacian orientation, and count. Okay, but that's not enough. We need uh, the information of some features that are taken for that pixel and around its neighbors. As we show, the, the surface uses some gradients, so the gradients will be relative to the neighbors, and that's what is gonna what this is gonna calculate? So the extract feature is another computer vision toolbox function that takes as an input the original the image and the points of interest. In this case, surf points, and it's gonna be smart enough to know. Okay, you're passing me surf points, so I'm gonna give you surf features, and if some of them are not valid, they're gonna be filtered. Okay, so and these are the points which are the same as this one, but filter if they are not valid. Okay, so let's take a look at how it looks. Okay, now uh, for valid points, we should have 180 because in this case, all of them are valid. And for features, we're gonna have a, this. So this is a, a, just a plain array. So notice a, it's, a, it's a regular array, it has 180, which is the same amount of points that we have so for each point we have 64 features so let's take a look at one of them all of the 64 yeah so these are 64 points 
and these these points these features for each of point of interest are going to be used to match so for example we have 180 points in here and i think we have in the distorted image which is smaller we have less points 124 so the points in here are going to be matched to the points in here using the features that we have in here the 64 each point has 64 features and those 64 features are used to match them to find uh, the pairs between the original and distorted image so let's see what we get in here so we have a total of 32 remember we have 180 and 32 and these are lineal index it could be confusing because the location of the points are x and y but still we have a linear index for the points 100 uh, so in the left we have the points of the original image and the right the points on the distorted image so in here we expect a value from 1 to 180 and in the other one we expect a value from 1 to 124 or something like that so these are going to get me the points of the original and this can be the points of the modified one and you can see it in here uh, yeah so 30, only 32 points match out of the 180 and 124 so we take the first column uh, this takes all the elements here that's what this means and this takes all the elements of the second column and from from there we use the valid points the 180 so we filter them and now we have the 32 points the the 32 points from from the original one and the 32 points from the modified one uh, from the story one and you can see it's the same it's basically the same structure that we saw at the beginning when we executed uh, the text surf features that we got the points it's the same now we're going to use this function from the computer vision toolbox show match features that take uh, an input the or one image another image and the points uh, that are matched from one image and the points that are matched from the second image so this is such a common task that a uh, the mal uh, malab computer toolbox vision a uh, computer toolbox has a computer vision toolbox has uh, this function to match the points into different images so uh, that's what uh, we're going to visualize in here okay so we can see the, the two images interleave one in top of the other and we can see for example this obelisk in here uh, is the base at least the base is matched with this obelisk base for example uh, the knee here is matched with the knee in here so and the elbow here is matched with the elbow so with the with all of this you can infer the rotation in the scale that's what we're gonna try to do some of them are, are not good so we're gonna filter them out so this estimate geometric transform 2d is a is gonna be used to infer the transform and the transform that we get here is a matrix similar to the ones that you see in video games for doing the rotation and translation in six in six degrees of freedom in space or the ones that you see uh, the equations uh, that you see in the for motion of robotic arms so those transforms are the same uh, as these ones uh, it's an affine transform basically and in the, this case since we are not do, dealing with a three-dimensional space the transform matrix is going to be three by three it's only representing the x and y coordinates and you can see here that uh, this is the valid indexes so we provide as inputs to this estimate geometric transfer to the uh, i don't know if i mentioned it but just in case this is using the msac algorithm m estimator sample consensus uh, which is based on the ransac algorithm and it takes as an input the distorted uh, points and the match points so uh, these points uh, are not the features uh, the features uh, we use them to match the points once we get the match the match points we only need to know the coordinates because the coordinates are the, are the ones that are going to be used to infer the transformation okay so let me see how much value we have a total of 32 points but note uh, this this vector right here the second return value is a vector of 32 corresponding to the 32 match points but uh, it's a mask uh, indicating ones and zeros where ones are valid so some of them are filtered and this we're going to use in here 
uh, to filter the points that are not valid. So let's take a look. So now uh, we have a total of 17 points from the original. Yeah, so we have 17 points, and those points are, are the same structure again. So we we filter them further. We uh, we have 32. Now we have 17. Let's take a look at the transform. It has two dimensions, and these points here correspond to the scale and rotation, and these lower two correspond to, to the translation. Okay, so let's take a look at the 17 survivors, which should be have more high quality. For example, you can see that the elbow survived, that the knee survived, and also the obelisk base uh, survived as well. We have more quality points in there. Okay, so now uh, we're going to use this uh, formula uh, to derive uh, this formula right here to derive the scale and rotation. Okay, so we need only to pick up SC and SS, which is these two elements. We're going to invert the matrix. Let's take a look. So we're going to pick up these two, which is the second row, first column, uh, first row, first column. And then we use Pythagoras and our tangent to get the, the scale and rotation. The, the, the scale was 0.7, so this is not very far from it. And the rotation was 30 degrees, and this is not very far from it. And uh, there's the algorithm here, uh, either this one or the other one, has some random sampling. As mentioned, so each time you run this, you might get slightly different results. Okay. Okay. So now that we have the scalar rotation, we but this is just for illustration. The only thing that we need is the transform, the affine transform that we got uh, from from this method, a uh, estimate geometric transformation. With that and the distorted image, we also uh, we can use IM warp to get the recovered image. But before doing that, we need an output view. And that is obtained by imref2d, which is based on the size of the original image, which is 256 by 256. And with that, uh, we get this view structure, which looks like this. It's basically using the maximum and minimum size of the window to populate all of this. We pass it to imwarp plus the transform, which we already saw. And the distorted image. So let's take a look. And now let's display the original and the recovered one. Let's see how it looks. And it's almost the same, but you can see this black in here. So it was not perfect, but we're going to improve it now with another example in which we're going to use in addition to surf, we're going to also use brisk to have more power in the inference of the affine transformation between the two images. Okay, so this is the second example, which is image registration with multiple features. We're gonna use a brisk and surf together to do the same experiment. So we just hit open TypeScript and let's go to the example. First, uh, let's open again the image. It's the same image and we're gonna uh, do some scaling. This time we're going to increase by 30% instead of decreasing by 30% using IM resize. Also, we have the J image. We rotate, it, uh, rotate by 31 degrees. And now let's show the distorted image, which should be rotated and a little bit bigger. Okay, now let's use the brisk features. Let's take the brisk features and the surf features, and those are the points. Uh, again, a uh, surf points. We're gonna have a hundred and eighty and around a uh, two hundred and seventy-eight uh, from uh, from the distorted image. Okay, so we had had a little bit more from the distorted. That is because this time we scale up, so the image is larger. So we expected more more points in here. For the brisk, the brisk feature has a bunch more more points. 1415 and the distorted one should have 2000 and more. Okay, so now uh, we pass those points along with the image to the same function. Notice extract feature is the same for both surf 
and, and brisk. And this function again is smart enough to take these points and know. Let's take a look at uh, one of the brisk points. Uh, again, uh, it has a location, it has a orientation, it doesn't have the Laplace sign, but it, ha it has the name of the class brisk point in here, and that's how uh, this extract feature identifies. Okay, I have a brisk feature. Then I need to provide a freak feature. So by default, it's going to provide a freak feature descriptor for the brisk features. And for the surf, it's going to provide surf features, which is the 64 points that we saw uh, before. OK. Yeah, so again, uh, let's take a look at one of them. Yeah, it's basically the same as the surf, but without a, well, not the same, but similar. Oops, it's not this one, it's the points. Yeah, uh, the, the sign of Laplacian is the only field that the other one doesn't have. The other ones are the same scale, rotation, metric, count, etc., and location. Okay, so now let's use those points and extract features and let's see what happens. Uh, notice again that this extract features is going to uh, return the features and the filter points because some of them might not be valid. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, in the case of surf, the output is 180 and 278, so all of them are valid. And again, the features are, for each of the 180 points, we have 64 features, and for the 100, 278, we have 64 features. For the case of Frick, a, we lost about... 400 points, a little more than 400 points for the original one and for the valid one, we also lost uh, like 500 points. The, and the features are different. The features are, uh, in this case, the feature are, is just a single array, uh, a, a plain array. But this one, it is an actual descriptor object. And the features are inside the feature field. Uh, it just have a I think this is unnecessary, right? including number of, number of features because we can infer it. A number of bits, that's a, a, a field that might have some value. And let's take a, one of the 90, 989 points and take all the features again. We also have 64 in here. We have 64 in Freak as well. Okay, so now uh, with that, we're going to use the match features. And again, we are using the same match features for both Surf and Freak. And here we pass the, the original uh, the feature descriptor and the distorted one with some parameters for match threshold and max ratio. We don't need that for surf. And what this is going to do is it's going to, for each point of interest in between these two lists, it's going to match uh, these features, these 64, these vectors. Each of these points have a vector of 64 elements and they're going to be compared. And with that comparison, you're going to match the points of each of the, of the two images. So after this point, after match features, you don't care about the, this anymore. You just care about the points, the pair of points. That's, that's what is important after this. So, OK, so in here we have uh, two columns. Uh, again, the ones in the left is the original image, and the ones in the right is the distorted image. And the same goes, uh, in this case, we have more because uh, the risk had, had 900, almost a 1,000 features. So you can see that we got a quarter of the points uh, only as for the pairs. And here we have, again, a 48, a little bit more than last time because the distorted image is a little bit bigger. OK, so again, uh, with those pair indexes, we're going to get the actual points for both brisk and surf. And again, we're going to use the same function, show match features to show the, the pairing for the brisk. So brisk has more features. It has a, a lot of points. OK, I, 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 the surface is not shown. We already saw. And now it comes the interesting part. We have the, the 48 pair points from surf and the 253 from brisk. But we only care about the equation. 
uh, we're pairing the, the the points the the because that's 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 the only thing that we need we need the geometrical points to the to infer the transformation for doing for inferring the rotation and the scaling and recovering the distorted image to its original place so we're picking up the points and we're concatenating them so we have 48 for surf and 253 for brisk so there should be a total of about 300 points that we get in here so we have a 300 pairs in here 300 pairs of points you can see them in here and also for the distorted image we have 300 as well okay so now uh, we're gonna feed the same points 300 points to the estimates geometric transformation 2d to get the fine transform so these are the points from the original image and the distorted image and again a uh, only a fraction of those points are gonna be able to estimate the affine transformation so let's see how many yeah so you got the filter in here some of them are valid some of them are not and we're gonna apply that mask into the points and see how many we got so out of the 300 uh, 236 points were used which is still a lot and again we're gonna use show match features to see those points to see which points uh, were able to determine the geometric transformation and we have a bunch more than in the first example so you expect a more precise uh, computation so we have a transform here again we get the the out view from the original side of the size of the original image using imref2 and then pass the affine transformation and the distorted image and we should have the recovered image again Okay, and let's just display the image in a montage style. And we can see that it's more precise now because we have a bunch more points to derive the rotation and scale. Okay, uh, that's all I have for, for this video. Thank you very much for watching.